I'm Professor Liz Thomas and I work at Edge Hill University in the UK in the Faculty of Education. I think belonging is quite hard to define, but everybody seems to know when they belong and when they perhaps feel a bit on the outside or a little bit on the edge of a group of people. Um, but it's really, it seems to me, a feeling or, or how, how, you, how you perceive an experience. And so belonging has, has proven in, in the work that I've been doing to be really important to people's experience of higher education, whether it's working or studying, and, and more widely other parts of their life. So I think it's hard to define, but we know when we belong and we know when we feel like outsiders. I think the question about what makes me belong to my university is a really good question. I've always been perhaps something of an outsider, but I haven't been living nearby and spending as much time on campus. So for me, the recent pandemic has actually worked to my advantage, that everything is now online. So I'm able to connect and belong with my university colleagues much more than perhaps I could before. So previously, I'd ask people to join meetings electronically online, and I was always the anomaly. And now, of course, it's normal for everybody to do that. So what makes me feel like belonging is about working together with people, whether it's joint projects or sharing kind of ideas and, and discussing things together. But I found the connectivity that we've been able to have through the online platforms a really positive way of feeling like a belonging edge hill. I think belonging when you're a student probably connects to having friends, having sort of close friends that you can talk to and share problems with. Universities in England think a lot about uh, student services and they're clearly important. But when students get stuck, they tend to talk to each other. They also talk to members of staff that they have a relationship with. So feeling that they know staff and more importantly, perhaps that staff know them really helps people to feel like they belong. Also taking on roles and responsibilities, whether it's a work role or a voluntary role in the university, really helps them feel like they're part of the university and representing it. We found in some of our work that students sense of belonging is much more to their course or discipline rather than necessarily to the whole university, but it can come through social activities, belonging to clubs and groups and those sorts of things. But again, it's that sense of really feeling comfortable and, and that there's a good positive fit. So one of the things that I've shared with my students is about confidence, that when I was an undergraduate student, I was really quite uh, lacking self-confidence and quite nervous about speaking out in, in seminars and group situations. So I'd prepare my seminar paper and I'd kind of read it looking down and not making eye contact with people. And, and, and in discussions, I'd always think that everyone else seemed to be talking about stuff that I hadn't read about. It seemed to be going in different directions to the way that I'd thought. And I tended to think that I was wrong and that they were obviously right. And so for me, it take, took a long time, whereas today I spend a lot of time talking in front of large groups of students and, and academic colleagues and others, and, and perhaps don't think so much of it. So you don't necessarily start with that sense of, of who you're going to become, but, but through the process of higher education and life experiences, you grow into the person that perhaps, perhaps you want to be, or certainly someone who's more able to do things that originally I thought I'd never be able to do. When I started researching student retention and success, we were looking at specific interventions and whether they worked and what helped to make them work. Um, and what we started to discover was that there wasn't a single intervention that solved all the problems and helped students to be successful and to stay in higher education and complete their degrees. But what we started to see was that those interventions that were making a difference that was demonstrated in the statistics at the end of the year, were those, those interventions that help students to, to engage in their learning experience and, and to, to talk, and, and the students talked about belonging. So they talked about feeling like they belong. So that the idea of belonging for us really came from the students rather than a concept that we sort of imposed onto students. So what we found was that students' engagement in their academic learning experience really helped them to belong and that their belonging came through their relationships with academic staff, their relationships with peers, and 
a, a very explicit kind of commitment to, to enable students to develop an identity and confidence and set of skills to be successful students. And the final thing we found to be important was around a relevant academic experience. So about looking at where students were now and where they wanted to be and helping them to connect their course to that. So for example, we found a lot of first generation entrants were studying things like business studies because it sounded very vocational. And when they started in their first year, the course contents wasn't necessarily as they'd imagined, and didn't necessarily connect with where they perhaps imagined they could be in the future, even if that was a quite poorly defined vision of their future selves. So work about employability and helping to see the connection between the course that you're studying and the sort of goals and aspirations that you could have really helps students to develop their sense of belonging to their, their course of study. But also to changing the curriculum contents a little bit more to make them more relevant. So connecting to the real world examples and things that students were interested in were all part of that sense of belonging and helping students to see that they, they had a place within their course of study. Edgehill's been really committed to improving student retention. We have a very diverse student population, so improving student success and ensuring that students maximise their outcomes is a really important goal. So all students have a personal tutor. So we found that personal tutors were a really good way for students to connect with their institution. So, so it gives them a named person. That they usually have the same personal tutor throughout their undergraduate experience and they have both one-to-one -one and group meetings. And so the group meetings also provide the opportunity to create a sort of smaller cohort of students that you can become your sort of peer group for support as well. So that's one of the things which is really important, moving towards a much more proactive model of, of student, of, of personal tutoring. So students are not expected to ask for help, but there, there, there's more an expectation that they engage with their tutors as a matter of course, and that that sort of, um, group identity is developed. So that's one of the things that we've been doing. A lot of emphasis as well on induction and helping students to really make an effective transition into higher education. And our student mentors have been a really important part of that process. So kind of creating a bridge between um, the new students and perhaps the, the university staff and course teams and, and, and an informal person that people can go to to ask questions and to guide them through some of the informal knowledge about how a university works. I think one of the biggest concerns for students at the moment are, are the various consequences of the pandemic and studying online more and not being perhaps able to do some of the um, placements and other more applied parts of their courses that they, that they would have been doing normally. So things are much better this year than they were, but we're still concerned about the online engagement. So ensuring issues around digital poverty, things like students having quiet places to study at home, as well as internet connectivity, as well as the appropriate hardware and software to do the kind of courses that they're, they're doing. So there's a lot of concern around those. There's been financial support for students to enable them to to, to have the equipment and other things, but some things are more difficult. So if you're if you're living in a house with your family and there's nowhere quiet to study, that's quite a hard problem to solve compared perhaps to providing a laptop and, and those sorts of things. So really helping students to engage online is, is, is a big topic at the moment. We had a, a colloquium just before Easter, and one of the things we were starting to, to explore Law is about the postgraduate experience. So a lot of the work in the UK and at Edge Hill has really focused on the undergraduate student experience and about belonging and success. And we were thinking about, for example, students, uh, postgraduate students doing a taught master's degree. So they arrive sometimes from overseas or, or sometimes from other places within the UK, and they have to very quickly adapt and hit the ground running and do their taught elements and then move on to their research. And so how do, we, how do we ensure that they're successful? Is belonging equally important to postgraduate students or are they juggling other things like work commitments and family commitments and things like that? So what is it that helps them to be successful and how can a university take responsibility and really promote the kind of learning environment that maximises postgraduate students' success? 
So that's something else we've been discussing over the last couple of weeks. 